While Monarch, Cosmo, Pendulum, and PK Fire decks were fighting for the top spot in the March 2016 format, there was another deck also fighting for contention, but we have yet to discuss that deck, and for good reason. After labbing the deep draw capabilities of the Monarch cards in combination with other unlimited cantrips, one of, if not the single most consistent FTK deck of all time came to surface during this time in Monarch FTK. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!! If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Oh, that last match was so good. I love the grindy back and forth that 2016 is known for, even if I end up losing the match. Anyway, this game, we're not gonna play much of Yu-Gi-Oh at all. So the Millennium Pack came out mid 2016. And while the majority of its contents are unspeakably bad vanilla monsters, I'm talking five star 1500 attack point monsters here, folks. There's a couple cards worth noting. One of them is Card of Demise, one of Kaiba's iconic draw spells from the anime, which was just as powerful in the TCG as it had been there. This card allows you to draw until you have three cards in your hand and you don't have to sell Yu-Gi-Oh players on a plus two. Unfortunately, it's got a ton of stipulations as well. Your opponent takes no damage the turn you activate it and you can't special summon. At the end of the turn, all the cards in your hand go to the graveyard. So you are trying to engineer a scenario where it doesn't matter if your opponent doesn't take damage and you are able to use every card in your hand without special summoning. This is difficult. The obvious answer as to when you would want to activate this card is on your first turn. But if you're activating it on your first turn, you've only got five back row zones and one monster zone available because you can't special. For that reason, you'd always be discarding a card and at that point, why not play a card like Upstart? But Duelists came up with a very interesting strategy. What if we had more zones? In fact, they decided it would be better if we were potentially able to make use of the two pendulum scales afforded pendulum duelists and stuff a couple cards that would otherwise be going to the graveyard in there. In fact, if the card you're setting is a Cleefort Scout, you could normal a monster, set five, and set both scales on your first turn. Sure, your opponent would have a chance to crack back, but with five back row, Let's see them do it. Cleefort was the first deck to make real effective use of Card of Demise, but it was far from the last. Over the course of the next couple of months, Duelists would experiment with this card in a number of strategies, most notably Cosmo Demise. Michael states, still got a profile that I think holds up, but for now, we're going to be looking at some stuff that was brewed in the first week. And this deck looks it. It's playing a lot of cards that I truly do not agree with. Laser Klee, for instance, does not strike me as particularly powerful. Two Monarch Stormforth, you don't want a brick on three. A Recliate, hey, it's searchable. And of course, two strikes and a warning. The prevailing sentiment at this time was because you would see so many cards with Card of Demise, it didn't matter that you were playing so many one of two ofs. Eventually, decks would solidify around a core of about 15 good traps you would just play three a piece of. For now, it's a little looser. You can see this deck is also playing a very low monster count. It is absolute death if you find three monsters in an opener that contains Card of Demise and their scales don't line up perfectly. So for that reason, you're not aiming to pull that many. Anyway, despite the fact that this deck was cool, powerful, and had a decent showing at the 2016 NAWCQ, we're not really going to get to see much of what it does in this game. That's because Alex is playing one of the most consistent FTK strategies in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! But mark my words, we may take another crack at this one, just because I don't think it's getting a fair shake. We've got two Cleefort Carrier, a Cleefort Disc, three Helix, two Stealth, one Monolith, and one Scout, three Card of Demise, two Forbidden Chalice, a Laser Klee, two Necro Valley, three Pot of Duality, a Raigeki, Sacrifice, Triple Summoners, Art, Double Stormforth, Bottomless Trapple, Macrocosmos, Recliate, Rivalry of Warlords, Skill Drain, Double Solemn Strike, a Solemn Morning, Soul Transition, and Vanity's Emptiness in the side. We've got Holes, we've got Fissure, we've got Necro Valley number three, Stormforth, Double Chaos Trap Hole, Triple Imperial Iron Wall, Climate Change, the third rivalry of Warlords, Soul Drain, and two huge Rev. In the extra, we've got Norton, Thousand Eyes Restrict, Ascension Sky Dragon, Blood Me Fist. This just exists to drive the price of the deck up. Concealer Tolmi M7, Cyber Dragon Infinity, Nova Diamond Direwolf, 
Divine Dragonite, Felgren, Magister Paladin, Gimmick Puppet Giant, Grinder, Hope Harbinger, Titanic Dragon Galaxy, blah, 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 Seven Sins, Pain Gainer, and Silent Honor Dark. You would never summon any of this. So, uh, I don't know how we won the last episode. I gotta be honest, we sort of played out of our minds. We probably misplayed somewhere, but you know what? It is what it is. A win is a win, and, uh, you know what? We take those, and you look, we're playing another Monarch deck right? I'm sure nothing could possibly go wrong this episode. So for those of you who don't know, around this time, Monarch FTK was actually touted as one of, if not maybe the single best FTK deck to ever exist in this game. It has somewhere upward of like a 60, 70, maybe even 80% success rate because the amount of deep draw that the Monarch cards actually add to the card pool is kind of absurd. And so after a while, some people were just playing Upstart Goblin and Chicken Game in their Monarch decks just to have a deck that's more consistent. Something like Domain Monarch can afford to do that. But some genius figured out, why are we even bothering playing the Monarch cards when we could just go Life Equalizer Magical Explosion and just win the game on turn one without even having to try? So that is where you get this abomination. I gotta be honest with you, whatever deck Joseph's playing probably isn't going to have much of a chance to beat this, and we we felt that we would be doing a disservice if we didn't show this off. We've showed off Magical Scientist FTK, we've showed off like Gishki FTK, and with this arguably being one of the best FTK decks to ever exist in the game's history, we've sort of set the precedent that we have to cover it, so if this isn't your favorite type of content, I apologize. Come back next week. I assure you we will not be playing this deck ever again, but it's important to show just how powerful this deck was, because it's also also the reason why cards like Chicken Game immediately get banned and Upstart Goblin go to one, and why a lot of these just redundant searchers like Terraforming eventually get limited now as well. Same thing with Into the Void. So let's do the card by card. Uh, so we are playing a Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. You know when this card is in here with Toon Table of Contents that that is always the makings of a healthy strategy. We have a few Monarchs. We have Triple Aether and one Erebus. Now, we do need a few of these for several reasons. So the first reason is that we need to actually activate a Tenacity of the Monarchs, and with that, we need to have one copy of these. So we need to have these somewhere, but we can also get rid of these rather easily when it comes to trade-in, when it comes to uh, copies of cards from the sky in the instance of Aether, and even excessive copies of Tenacity can be pitched away with Pantheism. So the thing about this deck is that the amount of combinations of cards that allow you to just keep filtering is actually quite high compared to most other deep draw decks, which is why this one saw the highest success compared to anything else. So we've got those. One Royal Magical Library. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we ever even summon this card, because if you don't see it in the opening hand, you're probably not going to need it, because you can go through the whole deck even without it. This just ensures that you actually get there. Helps you can unbrick sometimes. We have two cards from the sky. This is a card you may have never seen before. Banish a Light Fairy from your hand. If you do, draw two. You can't special summon or conduct your battle phase this turn. Guess what? We're not going to. Aether happens to be a Light Fairy. That's also an eight, so that's pretty good. Triple copies of Chicken Game. Uh, so Chicken Game was a card that a lot of people had a lot of mixed feelings about, and this is one of the reasons why we're happy this card is banned, because this card is one of the most annoying cards to play against, and it just gave FTK decks six more cards that they could go through because with Chicken Game, with Terraforming, and uh, oh, not to mention this deck's playing Pseudo Space. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. So we are on one copy of Domain of the Monarchs as well. This is just another target that we could possibly get to make sure that we always have count for Pantheism's effect in Grave, but also just something we can pitch off of Pantheism as well. One Hand Destruction, you could arguably do more, but honestly, one is just enough. It's to get rid of just cards that when you get to a point where you run out of cards to get rid of, Hand Destruction usually just fixes the problem. So that's why you only play one of this. Triple Into the Void, it's just Upstart Goblin. Triple Pantheism, this is Destiny Draw, but actually can plus you, because once you use the first one, you can just search for the other uh, one copy of something else, and that usually gets you to where you need. If you got Pantheism first, you can search for Tenacity, and the Tenacity gets you to another Pantheism, or you can get something like Domain to pitch off the Pantheism. So, once you activate one, that's pretty much all you're looking for there. Only one pot of duality, because you can only use this once per turn, unlike everything else in this deck. Pseudo Space allows you to copy Chicken Game and allow you to just get more draws, but it's also important for Life Equal equalizer, because if we don't have a deficit of 8,000 or more life points compared to our opponent, we can't Magical Explosion OTK them. This card is limited. So, that's what this is here for. This plus Chicken Game, as long as we go through all of these and then upstart our opponent a few times, we will ensure have 8,000 different differential in our life points, which means we can activate this after they're at 3,000. We just need 15 spells in the grave, which this deck's playing 32. Triple Tenacity, Triple Terraforming, Triple Toon Table, Triple Trade-In, and Triple Upstart Goblin. The last two traps are all we need. The one issue with this deck is that if you draw these too early, 
early, they can sort of brick you, and I hope that that doesn't happen. But uh, I like that this deck, it's not playing an extra deck, because, like, let's be honest, you don't need one. Uh, the side deck is actually transformative into playing a traditional Monarch strategy, and I do find that kind of hilarious, because, like, in the instance that you're, like, going second and your opponent does have cards that can stop you, you could hypothetically side into this so you're not relying on the FTK to win. I don't see that happening, because, let's be honest, there's, like, very few things that can actually deal with this anyway, but we do have a Mega Monarch Caius, we have Triple Edia, two Eidos, double Erebus, one Kuraz, a Domain to go with our other one, one Return, double Stormforth, and double Prime. Probably could swap out one Erebus for, like, another Stormforth or something. You probably don't need three Erebus. Uh, two was, like, started to become standard more and more as this deck evolved, but in any case, uh, this is going to be interesting, that's for sure. I really get, hope we get to show this off, because, it, you know, with how good this FDK deck is, if we lose, that would look pretty embarrassing, but I'm pretty confident. Uh, hopefully, as long as we win the die roll, I think we should be okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to do it. Man, Joseph, uh, after an electrifying episode last week, we now are going to be probably playing the exact opposite of electrifying for this one. Two decks that uh, just want to do what they do best, and that is not let the opponent play. What do you think? We're filming these in sequence because of YCS Vegas, and you, you all have no idea how painful it is to come off of a match like last week's where you feel, oh my god, what a fun back and forth. Now let's see who can resolve Demise the most effectively. Awesome. I think it may even start at, uh, <laughs> at rolling the die. Yeah. more than anything else. Let's just get into it. Shout out to Patreon. Daniel Rodriguez, thank you for the support. You won the last die roll, buddy. Uh, I have a number. Do you have the hand? Yes. I rolled a two <laughs> for the number of games that I'm going to win to win this match. I, I picked one. The number of turns no! we're going to have to sit through. Fuck. Okay, so this is not going to be as easy as I thought, though. Uh, it doesn't uh, matter. Play through cards. I'm, I'm ready to beat, like, decks that do things, you know? <laughs> Oh well, don't God. worry, Joseph. I don't have an extra deck. Everything's fine. Oh, oh look! This is, oh, oh this is oh, pretty man. actually. This oh, is a great hand. Oh man, uh, this is fantastic. Okay, I activate Laser Clee. All right, I'll, I that's fine. I'll scale Clee Fort Helix. I sure. will set two, and I'll activate Card of Demise. We get to see the card. I boom, love. Can I just boom, say, I've always boom. loved the artwork of Card of Demise. Such a cool looking card. Uh, I'm gonna normal summon uh, Clee Fort Carrier. But you know what? Actually, sure. let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, I'm gonna fire off Duality. Uh, okay. Okay. I think probably Chalice is the pick. Uh, and then the two to the top. Uh, send that to Grave. We're going to normal summon the Cleefort Carrier. We're going to activate Sacrifice. Okay. Looks One, good. two. Good luck to you, friendo. <laughs> And you don't have to discard your hand until at the end of five turns, as Seto Kaiba would say. Yeah. Right? Could you imagine if that's how the card worked? That would be unbelievable. Yeah, well, All I right. mean, it'd be more balanced than here where I don't have to discard anything. That is true. Very true. Uh, main phase one. So uh, you have a forbidden chalice at the bare minimum that I have to worry about and two potential other cards. And the bare uh, maximum. Let's see how it plays up. Uh, tune table of content. Yes. <laughs> Woo. Fun and interactive, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to cycle them all if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, we'll go one, two, and we will grab ourselves Mr. Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. Love that this card is always in every single FDK deck. You know, me fantastic. too. We will fire off a chicken game. I like my field spell a little bit better. Uh, haven't really seen much of this in history of Yu-Gi-Oh yet, and, uh, we won't be seeing it for very much longer after this. I'll activate chicken game. Yeah, when's the list? Uh, after this episode, I believe. Could we'll not come card. soon oh, enough. Oh, cool. Look at that. Uh, terraforming. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Uh, yeah, we're gonna see we're gonna see why this card is banned. Yep. Uh chicken game. Yep. We'll fire another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh we'll pay another thousand, draw another card. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh actually not too happy to see that one, but that's fine. Uh we'll go into the void yeah. and draw one. Yeah. And you know what, while we're at it, let's just draw another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go Tenacity of the Monarch. See, we're playing monarch cards in this deck. Okay. We're playing monarchs. I'll reveal Aether. Yep. And we will pick up ourselves a copy of Pantheism. Yep. Uh, let's go trade in for the Blue Eyes Tomb Dragon. Yep. <clears throat> uh, we will go Pantheism, Pitch, Domain, uh, draw two. Yep. We'll go Upstart. Yeah. You gain a thousand. Oh, yeah. I, I actually would like to decline that. <laughs> For the purposes of this deck, I bet you would. Uh, now, funny enough, I just drew a card that you can interact with. And so, unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to discard it to the graveyard. Uh, I'll start by using Pantheism. Yes. We're going to grab ourselves any of the lovely options. Tenacity, Tenacity, Pantheism. Take your pick. You already used Tenacity this turn. I have. You can have Tenacity. All right. Thanks, buddy. 
Uh, I have a pantheism I need to use. Figured, so that's yeah. fine. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> uh, we're going to activate a new card, Cards from the Sky. Uh, the reason you never see this card is because it's bad. But yeah, you know uh, what? Aether is a light fairy, yes, so we'll draw two is. more. Yep. Now, let you know, buddy, I can't conduct my battle phase the oh, turn good. I activate Good, this. good, good. That would be too much. <laughs> you should, you yeah. should be happy to know that there is a contingency on this card. Uh, let's fire another one while we're at it. Yeah. Let's try... Wait, what? 13 cards in deck? I'm going to go for duality. Oh, God. Okay. Three pretty good ones. Um, they're pretty good indeed. We will take the Erebus. Yeah. Uh, we've got trade in for the Erebus. All right, yeah. Uh, we can get rid of this chicken game for a pseudo space. Pseudo space, banish the chicken game to copy. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to terraforming to get the last chicken game out of my deck. Mm -hmm. Player pseudo space. Yeah, yeah. Pay a thousand. Yeah. We'll draw. Uh, we will play another chicken game. But before I do that, I drew a terraforming. Yeah, I'll yeah. get a pseudo space. Yeah. Chicken game. Pay yeah, a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Draw a card. <laughs> Go for another pseudo space. Yep. Banish, pay a thousand, draw a card. Uh, we'll go into the void, draw a card. Uh, upstart goblin, you can gain a thousand. Really would not like to. Uh, we'll go trade yeah. in. And uh, do I have it is the question. Uh, uh, there I think is we're fine. just, you've drawn yeah. literally every card we're in fine. your deck. We'll, yeah. ups, we'll upstart, we'll go the whole deck. <laughs> Why not? But we'll give you another thousand. You have and, to. Uh, I'll, let you, I'll, set, I'll set a couple cards face down. Could be anything. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, draw your card off upstart. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't get to draw my card off upstart. Thank you. All right. Uh, end phase twin twister. That'd be really funny, right? Uh, okay. Uh, we'll go soul. I, my heart stopped when you said that. <laughs> uh, here. Yeah, that's fine. Resolve into the void. <laughs> Sure, I will discard my whole hand. That is perfectly okay. fine. Uh, RML. God, you didn't even need RML for this? I didn't need RML. I was going to hand destruction it, but I can't because you go have a hand. So Demise right. actually I stopped me from doing that. Did what I could. All right, we'll soul transition here. This card's sick. Okay, cool. It is. Sure. I will draw two. Uh, and then um, Sacrifice was sent to the grave. So we're going to get a scout. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, we'll draw. Thinking and draw. Draw phase. Thinking okay. And draw. Do you have turn player priority do, and draw phase? Do you have something? Well, you can, as you can see, I have about nine cards to your two. So I'm going to be a kind <laughs> man. I'll offer you the draw. How, how about that? <laughs> uh, I appreciate the, uh, the sportsman like conduct, but, uh, I will activate life equalizer. <laughs> uh, I do not have a response to life equalizer. Okay, so both of our life points become 3,000. Fortunately enough, mine's already there. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you would like to count the number of spell cards that are in my graveyard, I'll activate Magical Explosion. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now you know how I felt during the Gishki episode, motherfucker. Yeah. He was just like gifting you free wins here. <laughs> just like... <laughs> The funny thing is we expected me to lose last episode. So this is like the freebie for me because I was on like a five or six loss streak. So uh, let's see what uh, you got, buddy. All right. Uh, Cleefort Scout. Oh, thank you for helping. Oh, actually, oh, that's pretty yeah. good for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you for helping. Uh-huh. That's actually a problem. I, can I get to the difference threshold for life equalizer with Scout? Oh, we are going to find out, motherfucker. We are going to find out. Uh, I can add a Clee card. Oh, my goodness. Clee card. All right. Uh, fuck you. I'm adding Recliate. So, oh, great. Uh, you um, better not be relying on Royal Magical Library this game. <laughs> uh, we're going to scale Helix. No, we okay. won't scale Helix. That literally does nothing. We're going to normal summon Helix. There you go. Sure. Huh? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah? You got the demise? I guess what, motherfucker? Necro Valley. Go. Oh, fuck. That actually fucks me up. Wait, <laughs> yeah. hold on. <laughs> okay. So can Monarch FTK beat Necro Valley and with you and having 72. 800 less life points? Yeah. I think that's actually more terrifying than you having Necro Valley. I'm not going to lie. So Necro Valley shuts off what? It shuts off pseudo space. It shuts off pantheism. Yeah. I think are the two main ones. That's actually a problem. I'm not going to lie. Good luck into okay. that fucking threshold. Yeah, we'll try. All right. So terraforming. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> so now here's the question. When was the field spell rule initiated that we could have two field spells? Are you spells? kidding me? The f you can have two field spells. <laughs> are you sure about that? Mm, are we in 2011 still? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured I'd try. I figured I'd try. That's right, what we'll we call in the business here. an angle shoot. <laughs> that is, is that is what we try for. That is what we try for. Uh, I like my background better, so we'll go chicken game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll pay a thousand. Yes. Draw one. Oh, excellent. That actually kind of fucks me. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, okay, so we're going to gain your thousand back with upstairs. Yes! This actually helps tremendously. Tune table. Yes. Actually, I don't think this helps at all. <laughs> we'll see. We'll go through all the tune tables. If I can find them. They're both up here. There's the boy. Uh, we're going to go cards from the sky. Banish Aether. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Upstart. Yeah. Shit. You know, okay, so funny enough, this deck trans has a transformative sideboard that just boards into regular Monarch. You can't fully side out of the FTK, but you're playing like all the cards you need to play Domain Monarch at that point. I, I, and so I thought I about actually boarding into those. And uh, now I'm looking like kind of uh, like an idiot because that was actually probably the correct thing to do because I think I actually just lose now. I can't banish with Necro Valley. I can't. You have fucking Recreate, so that's annoying. Indeed. I guess you have to kill me? But I give you another turn with Scout. That just, ugh. Go? <laughs> uh, end phase will go Soul Transition. Sure. Oh! Draw. Uh, what's the defense on uh, that stupid guy? It's expensive. What guy? Oh, what guy? Uh, scout. <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, RML's defense is 2,000, by the way. Thank you. Just a giant bookshelf. <clears throat> hmm. Grab Monolith, I think. Uh, we'll chicken game to kill it. Makes sense. Oh, epic. Regeki. Why'd you draw? Oh. I thought you were chicken gaming <laughs> to kill it. <laughs> what? Just fucking cheating I'm just, now. I'm just literally cheating. <laughs> I, I'm literally cheating. Okay. Um, We're going to scale Monolith. Normal Helix. Set to Demise. There it is. Yep. <clears throat> Raigeki. <laughs> yeah. Uh, duality. Ooh. Oh, nice cards. Uh, nice nice uh, bandies. These are all pretty good against trapple. you, right? These yeah. Are great. Uh, we'll take fucking Demise. Who cares? I was going to say, you got Demise <laughs> for next turn. That's actually pretty good. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so I can attack you for 24 and accomplish what exactly? You're attacking me for 18. Yeah, we're just going to set two and pass. Uh, I don't think I got anything. Draw. Okay, this is bleak. This is this is very bleak. How do I actually go about winning this? Concede button looking like a pretty tempting. <laughs> I was like, right I don't now. think you can actually get back to the eight thousand differential from this position. You did hit me for. Oh no, I paid that with chicken game. That's yep. right. That's the thing. It's almost actively bad for you to like hit me until you can kill me in one turn. And I don't intend to. <laughs> Into the void. Okay, we are winning or losing this turn. Let's go. Chicken game. Yep. Let's go. Uh, that card is still dead against you because you don't have a hand. Yeah, I just lose. So I have hand destruction, magical explosion, toon dragon, double pseudo space, and pantheism <laughs> of the monarchs. Epic. Woo! Uh, what, a, what a good one. Well, a good thing <laughs> that nothing's interesting is going to happen this game three. <laughs>The funny thing is, I could have, like, boarded out of Hand Destruction just to have any other Monarch spell or trap be in its place, and that would have actually somewhat unbricked me. I probably still wasn't going to win that turn, but uh, just randomly funny that that would have been relevant. Uh, I get to go first. Let's see if we uh, brick, like Monarchs usually do, or if we open the best hand ever, and judging by the looks of this, this doesn't look too bad. We got Tune Table to start. Let's go... We'll just add this to hand. We'll pitch our Tune Tables out of our deck. Yep. Uh, we will go for uh, trade in. We are never using this blue eyes tune for anything. We'll go terraforming. Let's get a chicken game. Uh, we'll start with the chicken game shenanigans. Yep. Uh, let's go for another chicken game. We will into the void. Draw one, into the void again, draw two, upstart goblin, you can gain a thousand. Uh, we got pseudo space this time. I got a little bit too hasty there and threw it to the graveyard. Uh, so we'll activate that, banish chicken game. That necro valley was actually way more of a problem than I thought it was going to be. Uh, let's go trade in the ether 
terraforming for chicken game. Yep. Uh, we'll go for another chicken game. I don't know why I keep doing this. Yep. Uh, we'll fire chicken game, pay a thousand, draw a card. Pseudo space, Spanish chicken game, pay a thousand, draw a card. Pantheism, pitch tenacity, draw two. Uh, we will go for pantheism. Uh, you have the choice of uh, pantheism, pantheism, tenacity. Uh, we'll do tenacity. Okay. Uh, I have not activated tenacity yet, so now I'll do that. Yep. Reveal an aether. Uh, we will grab our pantheism anyway. Let's go trade in pitch Erebus, draw two. Terraforming, I think we have one pseudo space left, and we do. We'll take that. <coughs> uh, eventually, we will activate the pseudo space. We will banish the final chicken game. Thousand, draw a card. Uh, into the void, draw a card. You know, I guess it's better late than never, right? I think at this point, it's probably. I still need 1,000 more. I uh, will go Pantheism, pitch, domain. Cards from the sky, banish. Aether. There we go. Uh, upstart. And uh, we got it. Okay. Resolve into the void. Drew the library on like card 29. So that wasn't useful. Uh, you got anything in draw? Yeah. 1, <laughs> 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You're one short. Say, do I have enough? No, I'm just kidding. You're not. I'm, <laughs> I'm just oh, literally I was about to say, Like what? <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's uh, that's Monarch, uh, FTK. I'll tell you what, buddy. If you want, I'll side into the full Monarch core, and we can play an actual game. You want to do that? No, not not remotely. I, <laughs> I'm I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, my god this is this is uh i mean this is the most consistent ftk that has ever existed in Yu-Gi-Oh. is that actually true i thought frog monarch might have been or not frog monarch frog ftk was no i, I think know this might be close i think it was this one and you know that's why they got rid of it pretty quickly but it was um yeah it was upwards of 80 percent uh which is okay. just unthinkable it just shocking uh, they, on the upcoming April ban list, which, uh, going into the next episode, that should be going into effect. I'm pretty sure they banned Chicken Game, and this is what finally limits Upstart Goblin to one. And, uh, yeah. I'm not sure if there's any other hits necessarily, but those two are good enough, because that means you can't just pseudo space draw six cards for free, or terraforming for that matter. Uh, that card doesn't get limited until much later, shockingly. But yeah, it, I will say it's interesting to see Monarch having so many different variants, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there's Domain, there's Extra Deck, and then there was this Abomination that people somehow came up with. Kind of makes sense because with Pantheism and Tenacity, you already have like a decent deep draw engine just there that Monarch was naturally playing. Uh, Monarch decks were already playing Upstart and Chicken Game. I just don't think we featured any decks that actually were playing them just because mm -hmm. it fixed the consistency problems that Monarch always had. And during the this time a lot of people always said if monarch didn't brick that it was the strongest deck so they were trying to just you know counter the uh bricking factor as much as they could mm -hmm. then some sadistic lunatic figured out wait why are we playing actual cards when we can just play every deep draw card under the sun and just magical explosion life equalizer because magical explosion is still at one copy on the ban list at this time and uh that's how you get what you see in front of you uh just a disgusting deck honestly yeah. i'm glad that this didn't stick around for long <laughs> when we do uh the masochist ban list tournament every so often um it becomes clear that the, the problem is if there are just like a critical mass of these cycling cards, the upstarts, the into the voids, uh, the chicken games, then so many of these decks become playable. It's not about like any individual one being legal. It's about like maybe 15 of them total being legal. Like the ability to play a 25 card deck means that you can FTK with an insane percentage. And this is one of the best FTK percentages in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is why it did not stick around for more than a couple of weeks. It's also interesting to see too, because like you actually play a few of the Monarchs in the deck and like typically deep draw decks, if you think to like Exodia playing Blue Eyes and the like, they run into this issue where sometimes the cards are a bit bricky and you mm -hmm. don't have enough ways to like filter them out of the hand. But like it, even with Aether being a, a light fairy for playing something as bad as cards from the sky, which is probably never seen play outside of like maybe, maybe like Edison format, if that, but I think that's a stretch. Um, 
you have a lot of ways to get these guys out of your hand between trade-in, between pantheism, and in the instance of Aether, even cards from the sky, that there are so many different combinations that allow you to just keep thinning your deck, where a lot of the times where these deep draw decks run into issues is you hit a hand... Well, uh, well, actually, one of the issues is you draw Magical Explosion and Life Equalizer too quickly, which mm -hmm. almost happened to me. I was actually just... on At one point, I was just hoping every card I was drawing was a draw card, and it got us there. I thought we almost bricked on it, but... Uh, but the other issue is just fixing that uh, that consistency problem, and uh, that's why this deck just does it so well. I mean, I aside from like some proper sequencing, it really doesn't take much thought to play this. Mm -hmm. uh, your deck, we didn't really get to see much of it, unfortunately. It's unfortunate because like this deck, um, <laughs> even out of the board, is not playing tools to deal with Monarch FTK, and that's because the pack that included a uh, card of demise, the Millennium Pack, uh, had just had its pre-release weekend when the ban list that bans Chicken Game came out. So these two decks could have hit each other at exactly one local event. And yeah. this Monarch FTK list was not really that popular until basically the week before the ban list. And um, so, you know, would not have been on the radar and wasn't on the radar in a post-ban list format. And as a result, I really just didn't have anything for it. Uh, Necro Valley's fine. Um, I had Imperial Iron Walls out of the board. Uh, I had Recliate for the... Um, uh, Royal Magical Library. Uh, I had Dimensional Fissure, which maybe screws up like some trade-ins, uh, and Macrocosmos, which screws up that and Pantheisms. I was but say, that just wins the game for you. Yeah, yeah all, all of these <laughs> I have to actually find. Like, they have to, you know, be in my opener. And uh, they aren't always. So, um, you know, uh, oh, I also have to win the die roll. That's important as well. That's also important, yeah. But, I mean, you're also playing Clea Demise, so I feel like that's important regardless. It is funny, though, that you're playing all these cards that are more for, like, the BA decks, the, you know, everything else that's around at the time uh, that just happened to work against this deck as well. Not yeah. that it's, you know, it, it helped you in the second game. I wasn't expecting Necro Valley, I'll be honest. And I would be and playing, like, a Wada Pond. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I had I had the double pseudo space, and uh, I couldn't banish a Pantheism, so, like, Necro Valley was just strong enough to beat this. It's actually really uh, shocking just how tight the margins are on this deck. Despite having an 80% FTK, if you take like 800 damage off of his scout, like the whole yep. thing just goes belly up. Um, right. Because I actually don't even think there's a way for me to make that up anywhere. Yeah, you would have fact, to have so. attacked into one of my monsters with Royal Magical Library. Basically. Uh, which is yeah. not ideal. And that's it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, um, a Cleefort Demise is just one of a number of decks that will start making use of Demise. We might be able to run this back on a future episode. I, I feel like, you know, it didn't really get a fair shot. I was about um, to say. Yeah. And it gets whatever a lot. Deck we threw, whatever deck we threw up against Monarch FDK was probably going to lose, let's be honest. And uh, <laughs> early Cleefort decks um, uh, are very mired in kind of how people would play 2015 Cleefort, this like assemblage of one of power traps. And as people realize that that's not how we play Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore um, and Shining victories is released uh the deck does have a much different back row lineup and now has to contend against some other demise threats in the format like cosmo so maybe when we get there uh we'll take a second look at this because you know this was bleak oh man i am so excited for shining victories format blue eyes format baby we're almost there let's go so guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout out to Shout1317, Tim00, X3, MBT, Play, Medulce, Moto, Cameron Smith, Pony Stark, The Synchro Guy, Phoenix the Immortal, Dan Manhoven, Richard E. Normus, Draconic, Jordan Coons, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, Valen Jackson, Little Fade Leaf, Dylan Hunter, Cody Brett, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Inyan Ataisho, Thanks for the Sleeves Dad, Dalton, Max, Twinkle Muncher, Matthew Brady, Luabon, Yodabon. I tried reading cards before. It was horrible and my guinea pigs had to get me therapy helios 515 simos chaos cooking draft cheeks mclapperty stolfin amethyst wonder waffle mbt cancel bio community soon cancel bio community soon cancel bio players soon neapolitan shrugzix the crystal beast enthusiast itf and corvain thank you all so much again for watching and we will see you next time